This presentation, entitled Radiocarbon Dating the Red Linear Style Within the Guadalupe Mountains and Lower Pecos Canyonlands, was given at the 2018 American Rock Art Research Association's Annual Conference in Grand Junction, Colorado. And this research was published in the 2019 volume of Arara's American Indian Rock Art publication. Hello, um, my name is Karen Steelman. And as a chemist, my research focus is on radiocarbon dating rock art, as well as pigment analysis. And as the science director at Shumla Archaeological Research and Education Center, I'm also assisting with rock art documentation and other research projects. Shumla is a nonprofit research center dedicated to studying the rock art of the Lower Pecos in Southwest Texas. We are currently working on a four-year documentation project to conduct baseline documentation of all 350 plus rock art sites in Val Verde County, including the state of Texas archeological forms, Shumla's extensive rock art site form, as well as 3D models and gigapans of the panels. We are calling this large-scale documentation effort the Alexandria Project. If you're not familiar with the Lower Pecos Canyon lands, this important archeological region is located near the Texas-Mexico border at the intersection of the Rio Grande, Pecos, and the Devil's Rivers. There are five defined styles of rock art in the region, uh, Pecos River style, red linear, red monochrome, bold line geometric, and historic. However, the region is most known for the large mural paintings of the Pecos River style. Marvin Rowe conducted 33 radiocarbon assays from 19 Pecos River style paintings at nine different sites in the 1990s. These dates range from approximately 2700 BC to 600 AD, or that corresponds to 4200 to 1465 years BP, or years before present. These dates were obtained using the plasma oxidation method, which we also utilize in my laboratory at Shumla. Another style of interest in the Lower Pecos Canyon lands is the red linear style, which consists of miniature figures predominantly painted in red. Here are what we call the curvilinear substyle at the red linear type site, um, which is called 41VV201. This red linear scene that you see here with the snares is at Mystic Shelter. The red linear style was originally thought to be younger than the Pecos River style. Solvay Turpin, a leader in rock art research in the area, proposed that rock art was the result of intrusive bison hunters during a climate interlude. And the sole radiocarbon result for the red linear style is of a red oval at 41 VV 162 um, A, the Cueva Quebrada. The panel consists of 17 red ovals, four with legs that Turpin described as a bison. A red linear panel with approximately 10 more typical anthropomorphs is also in close proximity in the shelter. An entire oval, which was a couple of centimeters in diameter, was removed for dating. An AMS date of 1280 plus or minus 45 years BP was measured. This would agree with Turpin's hypothesis that the red, small red linear figures are younger than the large mural Pecos River style paintings. Um, but I would caution that um, one date is no date, and that's sort of an old radiocarbon um, maxim, that one date is no date, and that more radiocarbon dating work is needed. 
And also in addition, it's uncertain if this red oval is really from the red linear style or another unknown style in the area. Um, it just wasn't taken from what we would call a diagnostic figure. Now I want to take you back to Mystic Shelter, which has Pecos River style paintings with super impositioning with the red linear style paintings. A classic red linear deer is painted underneath a Pecos River style image. So then what is going on? Technology really comes to the rescue here. Advances in technology have revolutionized the way we study rock art. Shumla researcher and founder, Shumla founder and researcher Dr. Carolyn Boyd is using a DinoLite, which is a digital microscope to look at super impositioning of pigment colors in the field. Here you can clearly see that the red is painted over the black paint. And so and this kind of research is especially important for studying the red linear pictographs. Using DynaLite field microscopy, Boyd and Schumla archaeologist Charles Koenig and Amanda Castaneda have identified 38 examples of Pecos River style paintings superimposing red linear style pictographs at six sites in the region. With the Pecos River style dating to 4200 to 1465 years BP, this stratigraphy demonstrates that the red linear is either contemporaneous with or older than Pecos River style and is contrary to the one radiocarbon date that we have for that red oval at Cueva Quebrada. So this definitely highlights the need for further dating research in the Lower Pecos Canyon lands. Now I'd like to move to a project that I conducted with Eric Dillingham, Robert Mark, Evelyn Billow, and Margaret Barrier in the Guadalupe Mountains. Comparisons have been made between the fine line paintings of the Guadalupe Mountains and the Lower Pecos River region of Texas, which has sparked a dialogue about what defines red linear style. While dating red linear style figures is difficult due to their small size, it's crucial to understand their temporal and geographical range. We collected nine paint samples for radiocarbon dating, as well as control samples of unpainted rock, which we call backgrounds, for analysis. We selected images that would give visual and stylistic information, as well as from locations that were already spalling and degrading naturally. We worked as a team to select locations as this is a destructive process. Samples are small, and we do photograph sampling locations before and afterwards but the impact on the painting is something that I consider very carefully and weigh against what archeological information we might gain. Once you get a sample back to the laboratory, it's good to think about what that sample is actually made of. It is a collection of mineral accretions and underlying rock substrate in addition to the paint layer. We want to date the organic material from that thin red paint layer shown in this um, cross-section. Um, and in other examples, it, it might be charcoal pigment from black paintings, but for a red painting, it's going to be an organic vehicle or binder that was added to an inorganic pigment when the artist made the paint. Do 
To extract only the organic material, we use a technique called plasma oxidation. But before we get to that step, we powder the sample in a mortar and pestle. Look at the sample under a microscope for visual contaminants such as rootlets. We wash the sample in base to remove soil contaminants. Filter and dry the sample. Then it gets loaded into the plasma system where it undergoes an argon plasma to remove absorbed gases and then it finally gets oxidized. Here is the heart of the plasma oxidation instrument. It's called a low temperature plasma because it is an ionized gas, much like a neon sign that glows. Samples are placed in the glass chamber and oxidized to carbon dioxide and water, which we freeze in the glass tube immersed in the liquid nitrogen. Then we use a blowtorch to seal off that tube of carbon dioxide. What is special about this technique is that the oxidation is done with electricity instead of heat. Thus, the reaction temperatures are below the decomposition temperatures of the mineral rock substrate, and only organic material is extracted, and the solid rock portion of the sample remains as a solid. So the organic carbon is isolated as carbon dioxide from the rest of the sample for radiocarbon dating. That extracted carbon dioxide is radiocarbon dated using AMS. I've collaborated with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's Center for Accelerator Mass Spectrometry, um, their abbreviation is CAMS, for about 20 years. The three sites in the Guadalupe Mountains that I'm going to talk about today are all within about a thousand meters of each other along the same drainage system. Three of the dates came from Lost Again Shelter. We actually took four samples here, but one of the samples had insufficient carbon dating, uh, insufficient carbon for dating. The other three samples worked quite well and we were able to get results. What I affectionately call half a dog, um, there's a quadruped here um, on the right of the photograph. Uh, was radiocarbon dated to 3260 years BP, which calibrates to 1670 to 1430 Cal BC. The lines that were later painted in a spall was the sample that we did not get a date on. So that is unfortunate as that would have been a good check of our dating methods. A sample from a line of anthropomorphs, um, maybe dancers, uh, was radiocarbon dated to 3600 years BP, which calibrates to 2500 to 1600 Cal BC. This is the sample that has the least reliability from a laboratory standpoint, not only because of its large plus or minus numbers, which are due to the small size of the sample, but this area of the panel had some contamination as well. A sample was taken from the anthropomorph um, here on the right, and this is just below that line of dancers from the previous sample. This painting is much older at 4440 years BP, which calibrates to 3350 to 2910 Cal BC. At the ambush two hand sites, we collected a sample from a red cervid.
here is the panel with the two handprints, as well as a beautiful panel of deer-like figures. The sample came from this bottom painting, uh, which was um, had some preservation issues and was radiocarbon dated to 3285 years BP, which calibrates to 1690 to 1450 Cal BC, which is very similar in age to the um, half of the dog or quadruped at Lost Again. The last dated sample comes from the ambush site. This is before the sample was taken. Notice all the spalling within the deer figure. The radiocarbon date is much younger at 1520 years BP, which calibrates to 425 to 625 Cal AD. So we obtained results for five out of the nine samples collected. We did not obtain results from the lines at Lost Again or three other samples that I haven't talked about from Last Chance Canyon, which are most likely recent Apache paintings. For the samples that did have sufficient carbon for dating, sample one from Lost Again and number four from Ambush Two Hands agree very well. Sample three um, also agrees, but it's also the most unreliable due to contamination issues. This brings up the fact that not all red linear-like paintings may be of the same age. So how do those dates from the Guadalupe miniature style compare to what we have for the Lower Pecos red linear style that I am showing you here? Well, except for that one younger age, the Guadalupe dates are contemporaneous with and older than the Pecos River style. So this is consistent with an archaic corridor along the Pecos River. However, I would argue that just because they are the same age doesn't mean that they don't have stylistic differences that should be studied with further documentation. And more stylistic statistical work like Boyd, Koenig, and Castaneda have done in their 2013 American Antiquity article is needed in both regions. But aren't red linear style paintings magnificent, even if they are of a diminutive size? And they definitely deserve more research. I'd like to thank um, my co-authors um, and uh, archaeology collaborators on this project, Eric Dillingham, Robert Mark, Evelyn Billow, and Margaret Barrier. Um, they've also published um, on the recording of this Guadalupe rock art in a series of papers in the 2011 volume of American Indian Rock Art, if you're interested in learning more about this style of rock art. Um, I want to thank the Lincoln National Forest, the Bureau of Land Management, Repressorian Cyber Services and Permian Basin MOA small grants um, for funding and support. I'd like to thank my former uh, university uh, where I was a chemistry professor at the University of Central Arkansas um, before I, I moved to Shumla. Uh, a lot of this work uh, was done there. And uh, one of the co authors on the publication of this work is a former research student of mine, Lennon Bates. Also, want to thank Dr. Tom Gilderson at, um, from uh, the Center for Accelerator Mass Spectrometry. He's been a longtime collaborator. And Carolyn Boyd uh, and all of the Shumla staff uh, for uh, their discussions and assistance 
in um, teaching me about the red linear style. Uh, thank you for your attention.